Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. So today I am back working on my ocean themed journal. So last time we put the journal together, uh, we decided on the elastic binding, we put in some signatures, and now I'm ready to work on the cover. Um, so I'm going to actually take the signatures out because I want to be able to lay the cover flat to work on it. And my thought was I would leave the back cover the way it is because uh, as I said before, this is from a book that I've had for quite a long time and I had done other things with it before. It's had a previous couple of lives and at one point I had kind of painted this blue on there and, and used um, a gold pen to, to outline that design. So I like it and I like the I like it so I want to leave the back but I'm going to do something on the front that I want to try to create some sunken treasure like bottom of the ocean kind of treasure. So I want to create some uh, texture and then I am going to pick and choose some of these things to build up on top of it and do some painting over it and some highlighting and things like that. Uh, to make it look like treasure on the bottom of the ocean, sunken treasure. So I have way more here than I could possibly use, I'm sure. And this is pretty heavy. I don't know that I'd want to use all of it. Uh, but as usual, I have chosen way too much stuff. Um, but there's some, there's some fun stuff here. So there's bits and pieces of jewelry. There's some um, play money that will be fun. There's some metal things. There's some keys and things like that. I have some little shards of pottery, some shells. Um, yeah, all kinds of all kinds of little things here. So it should be a lot of fun. So I, I think we should just get started. And as I said, I, I think I want to, since since we did this with an elastic elastic binding, I think I just want to take these out so that I don't have to worry about, um, messing any of it up if I can figure out where they separate. Um, that will probably be a good idea. I'm just going to lay them aside on their elastic. Just to keep them from, from getting messed up. I just want them out of harm's way. And then when we're done, we can slide those back in. And it will make it much easier to be able to work on the book this way. So I, I know I keep looking at the back thinking I'm just gonna leave it. So that's, that's probably what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start with trying to build up some texture by wrinkling up some, some tissue paper and lay, layering it on here before I put um, any gesso or anything down. Uh, the, the book cover is not shiny. Um, it does have a coat of paint already on it and it was kind of a fabric-y sort of, sort of fabric-y kind of book cover to start with. So I don't anticipate that I'll have any trouble getting this to stick. Although I'm thinking I probably should have, uh, you know, done this before. <laughs> I put the, the binding on, but I think it'll be fine. We'll just run it right up to it. Since we've got that bottom layer completely glued down. Um, for this, I am just using some universal wallpaper and border adhesive. This works really well for collaging paper items. When I get to putting on all of the things that are gonna make up the treasure chest, I am probably gonna use some construction kind of glue because we're gonna paint over it. So I'm just wadding this up and then I'm gonna kind of put it on. I just want it to be, you know, a little wrinkly just to create some texture. And I may put, you know, two or three coats on here of the paper. 
just to create some wrinkles and texture so it doesn't look, you know, I don't, I just don't want it to be too smooth and, and perfect. I think this we can take it last time you know I kind of glued the bottom layer down really well so I think we could probably take this right up under under that layer there and then we're gonna have to wait for some dry time in between these things so you know I, I really love uh, making mixed media kind of things where it's got layers and layers and layers of stuff uh, but it does require it does require a good deal of dry time sometimes. So I might get the heat tool out and, and see what I can do, but sometimes I'm not I'm not confident that that's the best way to go. <laughs> Just get a little more on here. Go right up to the edge. So at this point, the more wrinkly, the better. Because um, I want that bottom of the ocean kind of feel, so I don't want it to be too perfect. I want there some, to be some movement down there. And uh, probably kind of bunch it up here. Put a couple of layers on. beauty of tissue paper, of course, is because it's so thin, it's easy to do multiple layers. Hope you're having a good day. Hope everybody's doing doing well. Just kind of winging this here. Just want to make sure that there's plenty of plenty of folds and texture and I think when I paint this, I'm gonna paint it, probably gonna do a mixture of, of, of maybe brown and, and black kind of sponged together just to create uh, a background. I might, might do it in one color and then dry brush over it in another. So I'm not really sure how, I, I'm, you know, I think maybe I might do some blue because every time I look at the underwater pictures, the light coming down bounces off the water and creates, you know, the blue color. So that's, that's always a possibility. Let's get some. We'll have to kind of figure it out as we go because I know kind of in my head how I want it to look, but I, I couldn't really find I couldn't really find any pictures to sort of you know 
guide guide what I wanted. They were all um, like all the treasure. I was looking for pictures of treasure, and it's almost all uh, either like just the, the sunken ship or the um, treasure up above. So there's not a whole lot of pictures like close up of of the treasure on the bottom, <laughs> which is okay. That just means it's our fantasy and we can make it any way we want. Okay, it looks like it's a little dry down there. I wanna make sure we get that soaked all the way through. I want it stuck good. Okay, I think, I think that's probably good for now because we're gonna have a lot of stuff over the top of it, so it doesn't have to be, um, you know, layer after layer of layer, but I, I do like it like this, I think. So I'm going to turn off the camera, let it dry, and when we come back, we will maybe start applying some paint. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, I'm back. Um, as you can see, this is, this is dry. Uh, also, I am notoriously messy when I start painting and doing things, so I have covered the, the back of it with some, just some Amazon packaging and some low tack painter's tape just because I really want to protect those interior papers that were on the inside of the cover. They're, you know, it's, it's a pretty old book and I like those inside papers with the shells and stuff on them. So I really wanna make sure that, that doesn't get messed up. So I was feeling of this and I do like the texture, but I was thinking I might use some of this terrible, <laughs> I tried to make some uh, some of the molding paste, the, you know, the paste that you run through, uh, stencils and things. And I just didn't get the texture right. It was too soft. It was too wet. It was too hard. It was too this, it was too that, but it is pretty gritty. And so I thought I might just kind of spread some of that around to add to that kind of sandy bottom feel. So I was, I was just about to paint it and I saw this jar of stuff. I was thinking I was probably just gonna throw it away. Um, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll save it for a while. I just, I've doctored it a couple of times and it's, it's, it's just too wet and it's too stiff and it's this and it's that. You know, I just didn't get it right. Um, and I used, I probably used the wrong thing when I made it. Uh, so I need to go back and remake some. So I'm thinking I'm going to add some of this um, in just kind of different places here. And then when that's dry, I am going to paint. And I've decided to go ahead and paint in the blues and greens because if it's too bright, we can, I can always, uh, you know, put gray or beige or you know something over it to to take it down a notch i don't know that i want white since it's kind of the bottom of the sea but i could definitely put something sandy over the top of it so now i'm looking at this thinking i probably didn't even have to do the tissue paper part at all um, but i'm i'm hoping this is gonna stick really because it's it's not really a good texture so, you know, if it, if it doesn't stick <laughs> well, um, I may have to let it dry and then determine whether or not it's going to, to stick very well. And if not, put a, put a coat of glue or something over the top of it just to, just to make it lay down. So I don't know, um, but, but I thought that might be, might be worth a try. So we're going to try it, you know. That's the great thing about um, doing mixed media and this kind of stuff is there's, you know, there's no wrong way to do it. It's, it's just try it and if you don't like it, try something else until you do. So, all right, so I'm gonna let that dry and I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. This is dry and it's actually hard and it's actually sticking to the cover. So I am excited on many, many levels <laughs> that it actually worked. Um, so I have some just paint, I have some assorted paint. I have a couple, there's like a darker blue, kind of a medium blue. Then I have one that's very aqua, 
And then I have one that's very kind of turquoisey. It says aqua green on this one. And it, well, it says this one is turquoise and this one is aqua. Um, so those are, those are the, the paint colors that I have chosen. So the, we're gonna, I'm gonna start with the darkest one and kind of just sponge it around and then add some lighter uh, colors to the top. And my, my general thought is if it's, if it's too bright, which I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, um, then I will, you know, knock it back with some other color, gray, black, something like that. So I probably should have put some tape on that edge to cover that. That might be a good idea. Maybe I will stop and do that in just a minute. Actually, that's a very good idea. I'm going to get some tape. Just because I don't, I don't want paint all over my edging here. A little bit right on the. Just gonna cover that up because I am, as I said, notoriously messy. So. Then I can get right up to it. So I'm just starting with the darkest color and just kind of filling in everything. And then I'll sponge the other colors over it. But I want a base with all of that yellow covered. Um, the only reason I use the yellow tissue is because it just happened to be what I have and I knew I was going to to cover it with paint so it didn't really matter what color. So later we're gonna put some highlights in that should pick up some of that texture better. Although you can already see some of it here just in the way the paint is going on. color here, see what we can get. And I'm just going for, you know, just random multicolor reflections of blue down on the bottom of the ocean, if you were looking at the the bottom, I'm thinking, you know, somewhere in the Caribbean, if you were diving and looking for, you know, diving around some reefs, or maybe sometimes there are some, some wrecks that they let you dive around. I'm not sure that they're actual wrecks. They might just be, you know, things that or that they sunk so that you'd have something to dive around. <laughs> when we were in uh, Key West several years ago now, um, there were, we, we did snuba, um, and there was like a boat on the bottom of the, the ocean that we could, you know, dive down dive down to look at to swim around so but I'm not really sure you know I, I think maybe they had sunk it somebody had sunk it there just so you'd have something to swim around and it, and it made nice you know it was it was nice because the the fish could 
have some more coral. There was coral growing on it and things. So. All right, liking this. Let's see if we can put in some brighter. That may be too bright. I don't know. By the time we spread it out a little bit, it's not so, not so bad. It'll just be kind of a question of what we put over the top of all of those little elements because they'll get glued on and then paint will go over the top of those. So probably something more sandy looking on the top of that to make it look like silt has built up on it. This does look kind of like the light is hitting down into the bottom. Definitely has some texture. I don't know if the texture is showing up very much on, on camera, but in here you can see um, and then, of course, you know, when you're running your hand across it, you can definitely feel it. Okay, I think that's a pretty good base, so we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to start gluing things on, arranging things um, for our treasure kind of on the top of it. So I'll be back in a few minutes to do that. Okay, I'm back. The blue is dry, and honestly, after it started drying, I decided it was a little too bright, so I did a little dry brushing with um, some lamp bat black um, and you can kind of see through here and it just toned it down a little bit um, but I didn't really think you needed to watch me do that but um, you know I just put a tiny little bit on a brush and went over the top so that you started seeing all of this texture and it, it started showing up because it's got a really yummy feel to it I, I love the texture it's very it's very sandy and and you know craggy feeling. So uh, I think we're ready to try to figure out what's going to go on. Excuse me, got a, got a frog in my throat. So again, I have all kinds of stuff that um, I can choose from. There are shells. I, I had these in there, but I think they're really heavy. So those may go in at the end, maybe one or two, uh, just for some shininess when we're done. Um, but, but I don't think I want those very much because they're very heavy. The rest of the stuff is, is pretty light. Um, so I have some pieces of shell and I have uh, some little pieces of broken pottery that might you might see at the bottom and you know in with some treasure. Then I just have kind of random doodads. This is plastic from um, like a candy box, the, the molded candy tray that chocolates come in, but it has a really cool texture. So my thought was when, when it gets painted over, it's gonna have an interesting texture. Um, I have a piece of a broken spoon that, that you know, could peek out. Um, I have some, some, uh, plastic coins here that, you know, this one even has like a treasure chest on it <laughs> and a pirate something on the other side. Who knows where I got these? Don't, can't even tell. It probably says on there, but I can't read it. Um, there's, you know, there's this is from a drawer front, um, part of a spoon. Here's an old whistle. That might be, some of these things might be too too dimensional, too big, I'm not really sure. Um, these are, you know, old furniture brads, but I can, we can take off the nail part of it. Um, these are faux wax seals that I, I got in, you know, a grab bag at, at the discount store. Um, there's a belt buckle. There's like a gear thing from a Lego set. Um, 
There are, you know, fake pearls that we can do around. I thought this might be fun, this, this plasticky, fakey plasticky necklace, um, you know, because the paint will, will kind of wipe off of it. We can put paint on it and then kind of wipe off so you can see pieces of the jewels, right? And that's, that's kind of my thought is I want it to look like the stuff, the stuff is, has been on the bottom for a while so you can still see parts of it. Um, but some of it, but it'll be kind of dirty and, you know, peeking out. So I thought that I'd glue it down and then, um, like put some paint over it, maybe either some of the black to kind of, um, really dull it down and then some beige. But then as I'm painting, like use a wet wipe to kind of wipe off some of the tops of things so that part it's like partially peeking out. So that's the idea. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of try to figure out the layout and start gluing it down. Um, I was looking for my construction glue and I, and I have some somewhere, but I can't find it apparently. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm out. But I did find some wood glue that's um, quick grabbing, heavy duty wood glue. So I'm probably going to use that uh, to stick it all down. And then it will probably need to dry overnight before we start painting. Uh, just just to get it good and dry. Um, so I may use that. I may maybe I'll grab some of my art glitter glue in combination with it. Um, but we'll we'll do some layout. Uh, I'll probably just speed up this part of the video and and uh, play with it and until we we are happy.
Okay, I'm gonna stop there for now uh, and wait and see how the glue does. I think it's gonna need to sit uh, for a good 24 hours. Um, and then if I need to re-glue some of the pieces, um, I can do that. I think a lot of it's gonna stick, but some of it is a little iffy. So once it sits for, for a little while, um, we'll know for sure. I'm not worried about the extra glue kind of coming out around because we're I'm gonna put paint and things over this, so it's it's not important. Um, it will it will cover up the glue. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna stop there for now to see to see how we're doing um, and let it completely dry. And then I will go back and add a little more glue and touch up anything that's that's coming off um, and fix it up. So the next time you see it, I think we'll, we'll be ready to do some painting. So see you tomorrow probably. Bye. Hi guys, I'm back. It has been oh, about 24 hours and everything seems to be glued down really well. Nothing is coming off, so I am happy about that. I was afraid I might have to re-glue it. Um, I have, I've been thinking about how to make it look like it's it's been sort of buried. And my initial thought was to put some paint on it and then just kind of to wipe off some of the surfaces that were showing through the top. But I think before, before I do that, I think I want to put some more of this texture on there. So I'm back to my icky texture paste that I didn't think uh, turned out very well. <laughs> I just shook it up so now it's everywhere. Um, and so my thought was I would just kind of work it down and around some of these things so it looked like they were coming up out of the sand. Like I don't want to cover them all. I just want I just want some of it to look like it's you know partially buried. So I'm thinking this is gonna be kind of a a job for my fingers and you know I just I just want it to look like it's partially coming up you know especially down in the the crevices and stuff that really I think needs needs to be uh, sort of buried in there um, so you know the, I want some of the jewels to show and some of the stuff to show so I think um, we can just kind of wipe off the tops of things as we go. But this seemed to me like this was going to be going to be the best bet for making it look like it's buried. You know, because it, it just it's been sitting on the bottom of the ocean for a while, so that means there's silt built up on top of it. Um, I just, I was looking at a lot of the pictures of, of the shipwreck, uh, shipwreck things, you know, that you can find. You just find pictures. I was looking at pictures of shipwrecks and stuff underwater, and I, I didn't find a lot. Most of them, the treasure had been cleaned, um, but there were a few that were, you know, pictures taken by, uh, robotic, robotic, uh, diver things, you know, like little robotic submarine things. So I just want these to look like they're coming up out of the ground here, out of the ocean floor. So I am going to do that. I am probably just going to speed up this section or if it takes too long, I'll just kind of, um, I'll, I'll just edit some of it out and, and cut away and come back. But this is really all I'm going to be doing is is sort of putting down some of this uh, really gloopy stuff I made, <laughs> and uh, um, and then wiping off surfaces. So
Okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it to dry. It's gonna, gonna take a while because there's a pretty thick layer. Um, and then I think when we come back, at that point we'll be able to put some color on it. Um, and, and I'm thinking some blues and greens and then some rust maybe color over the top of it. Uh, so we'll see how it looks. So I uh, hope you'll stay and, and check it out with me. It's kind of just an experiment as, as we go. So I'll see you in a little while. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, you can see this is totally dry. It's actually dried over the weekend and it's all kind of cracked and craggy looking. I, I love how this looks. I'm hoping that it will look even better with some color on it. Um, I'm gonna try some of the inks. Um, I showed the, these to you before that I had some inks that were kind of the dregs of some inks and put, put them in some spray bottles with a little bit of water to try to get the very last that I could out of them. So I want to try spraying those on to see how that looks. And if that doesn't work very well, I think we'll um, have to water down some paint. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that this is gonna look really good. So I guess we'll see. So let's... This one doesn't want to spray very well. It's making a mess. I was hoping it might kind of drip around, but I think I might have to pour it on to do that. Yeah, I'm not sure this is this is going to work. It just doesn't really seem to be sticking very well. It's Try some kind of this brownie, rusty color. Yeah. I don't, I don't think this seems to be working very well. Not getting a lot of color. I mean, there's a little bit. But I think we're gonna be better off. Yeah, I think we're just gonna be better off with some paint, so. Okay, let's mop this up a little bit. Trade out that paper. Okay. Um, yeah, that just kinda I just kind of made it bluey, but didn't really, yeah. Well, you can see, it, it just didn't really work very well. All right, so let's go back to the paints, perhaps, that uh, we were using. I think just some watered down versions of those might be a good idea. So we had, I had several colors of, of blue, Kind of an aqua and a little bit of black. So I think we'll just kind of, and I think what we'll do is, is I'll just really, you know, get them, get them pretty wet here. And get a little bit bigger brush.
Okay, I think I'm gonna let that dry and look at it for a little while. Um, I'm thinking I might hit it with some gold highlights, but it needs to be really dry before I do that because I don't want it to mix. I just want it to kind of brush across the top. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry, so I'll be back in a little while. Okay guys, I'm back for the last time on this video. This is all dry. I have put the pages back inside um, and the front is, I think, looking pretty good. I, I like how it's all grungy and bottom of the ocean-y, kind of rusty looking with the blues and, you know, things peeping out. Um, and then I, I left, there's a couple of the gems that are kind of more clear, but many of them are kind of sandy. Uh, and so there's just hints peeking out. I had thought maybe I would use some gold to kind of highlight things, but I don't think so. I think that would kind of take away from the grunginess of it, and I really like that. I like the, you know, pieces that looks like sand and, and things like that. So um, I'm going to leave it kind of grungy, uh, and I like it. it. It is a little heavy, but there's a lot of stuff on it. So I think that's okay, uh, especially because we chose that elastic binding, remember, so that we can take pages in and out to work on them. So that will make it much easier. You won't have to worry about uh, whether or not the cover is in the way or anything like that. So I'm gonna start working on some pages in the next few days, I hope, and, and I will try to take you along as we go so we can build the journal together. I will see you soon. Until then, I hope you have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe, and remember, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Bye.